Hi y'all, in this video I'm going to discuss a fraudulent scholar that Jerry Coyne has been endorsing on his blog. Hi Jerry Coyne, I know I'm a gun nut so everything that I say is suspect, but just hear me out, you can check behind me to make sure I'm telling you the truth. If uh, you're, you're a scientist, you were a good scientist uh, before you retired, um, and you know how peer review works, and what peer review is weak at doing. Peer review is notoriously poor at catching fraud. Peer review relies upon reasonably honest researchers accurately reporting what it is they have done without any deception. And if they do deceive people, the scientific community is hard-pressed to notice that. Uh, you have fallen victim to that here, Jerry Coyne. If I handed you an, a, a paper written by Kent Hovind and Ken Ham, I know for certain that you would not take what it says at face value. You would look behind them. You don't trust them, and you're right not to trust them. Well, one of the authors of the study that you are endorsing on gun control, his name is Philip Alpers, he is to the gun control discussion what Kent Hovind is to an evolution discussion, an outright fraud. Uh, this Philip Alpers person, Mr. Alpers, has a professorship at the University of Sydney. This professorship was given to a man who failed out of college. He failed university. It is given to him because he, gave, he went around giving a lot of speeches, and it was advantageous to the public health school there uh, to have him on board as an associate adjunct faculty. Now he uses this uh, professorship to bolster his quackery, and you have, uh, you have bought into it, hook, line, and sinker. And I'm just going to point out a couple of things, uh, that people like him depend, uh, assumptions and understandings that people like him depend upon people like you to have, so that way uh, you're easily fooled. So um, you just finished talking about the, there was already a decline in the homicide and suicide rates before the 96 ban, and you write. Uh, thereafter. <clears throat> that said, the data show that the number of mass shootings defined as shootings in which more than five people die dropped to zero after the ban, 19 years after the ban was enacted, while there were 13 uh, such incidents in the 18 years before the gun ban was enacted. Um, you have not actually uh, correctly reproduced their definition, and you left out a word that is actually crucial. Uh, these people aren't looking at mass shootings. They're looking at only fatal mass shootings. That's what they've defined, fatal mass shootings. And I will tell you why it is that uh, they have this sui, this, uh, sui generis definition that exists, it exists nowhere else. It is ad hoc for this, for this paper only. Uh, it's so the way they can actually get rid, ignore, exclude all of the mass shootings and the mass fatal shootings that have happened in, after the 1996 gun ban. There is no shortage of these events happening in Australia. Um, so they look around, you know, here's, here's the gun ban, some years before it, some years after it. And then they ask themselves, what can we possibly do to exclude these and have the, the thinnest patina of academic credibility? So the way some idiots will take us seriously. I know we'll, we will not talk about mass shootings, generally. We'll, uh, we'll narrow the definition. And then they look around and go, ah, shit, even on this narrow definition, there are still all these mass shootings. What can we do now? Well, go look at the ones before and start uh, looking at the lower numbers and see what we can get away with. Uh, oh, look, if we choose five... Uh, that that lets us keep some of these from uh, you know some of the uh, these from the b b uh, these from before, while magically reduces all the ones afterwards, and that is just uh, by sheer defining out of out of existence uh, all these dead bodies, all these people who have been wounded. If you went into a mall and gunned down a million people, but only three of them died, they would say that was not a mass shooting. I don't think that is a sensible definition. Now, the, uh, the way that this game gets played, Jerry Coyne, is that when people on your side of the discussion don't get their way, uh, they just they find dishonest ways to make it appear as though something is happening in reality when it is in reality, uh, reality not actually happening. So take this, this supposed uptick in mass uh, shootings in the United States. There is not actually any uptick in the mass shootings in the United States. What there has been is a change in definitions which allows them to count more things as mass shootings, which they claim are, uh, are you know, it's, a, it's an uptick in the violence. There aren't actually any uh, extra corpses lying around that need to be done away with. Uh, they do this so that way they can, they can exploit people's emotions. So there was an obscure statute passed in 2013. If you want to look it up, it's 28 U.S. Code 530C B1M Romanet I Roman I. To, uh, as a funding provision, so that way the Attorney General can disperse funds when there's been a, uh, either a mass killing 
or an act of mass killing, which for purposes of that statute, in the, in the subsection I just uh, cited you to, is defined as three or more persons killed, or an attempt to kill three or more persons. They, you know, they can spend money on that. The FBI, on the other hand, uses four persons uh, killed or more for a uh, mass murder. This is a definition that's used around the world. The FBI is highly respected around the world, and law enforcement uh, communities use that definition. Your side of the discussion has latched onto this very obscure funding provision and said that this is the definition. It is not. It is a lower threshold, so that way the Attorney General can be more helpful, which, when passed, people knew that it would be hijacked by people like you to claim that there are now more mass murders, when in reality there aren't. Now, after a gun ban goes into effect, you, you switch the definition and raise the threshold to prove how well it has worked. And uh, the interesting thing, Jerry Coyne, is that people like you are so gullible, so foolish, uh, so naive, you fall for it every time. So look into that Philip Alpers guy. He is an academic fraud. He is a nobody. He could not pass college. He failed. And yet he is a professor because reasons. Um, there are many other problems with, with the study. Uh, for it, Okay. Uh, one of which isn't mentioned in the study anywhere, and since it's not mentioned in the study anywhere, uh, people like you are going to make an assumption that these authors depend upon, which namely uh, namely is the extent of the gun ban, the so-called buyback, which they've spoken about. Yes, after the buyback, these data have come about, which we didn't like, so we've uh, dishonestly excluded much of, the, you know, much of this data. I'm sorry, much of these data. Uh, but we're just going to completely ignore a fact that we should mention in order to paint a true picture of what has happened in Australia, so that way useful idiots like Jerry Coyne will believe what we have to say. Namely, uh, and Jerry Coyne, it is this. There are more privately owned firearms in Australia now than before the gun ban. After the, after the so-called buyback program went into effect, Australians rounded, you know, let their firearms be rounded up and then exploited loopholes to rearm themselves to an even greater degree than they were armed before the gun ban. So even, assume, even, even if you accept that everything that these authors say is true, that this trend has happened downwards, um, that only shows that as the Australian people have increased their armaments, the suicides and homicides have gone down. So you, uh, you write uh, somewhere else in there. This report, then, is heartening, not, uh, but not decisive. It certainly gives us no cause to think that if a Western uh, nation suddenly tightened its gun policies, gun-related deaths would rise. Uh, this is another problem. You're trying, to use, you're trying to model the United States on the attitude of people in Australia. We aren't talking about a Western country. We're talking about the United States. The United States is, in many respects, a unique country, unlike any other country which has ever existed or which currently exists. It may well be the case that you can go to England, you can go to the, uh, Australia, you can go to many different places and usurp people's liberties and they will happily comply. That is not the history of this country. The last time there was a mass confiscation of firearms attempted in this country, it produced a little something called the shot heard round the world, which the world continues to hear to this day. That is, what, that, that is the seminal event that kicked off our Revolutionary Wars when Thomas Gage, General Thomas Gage, uh, General Thomas Gage marched on Lexington and Concord to uh, confiscate the arms of the colonists there so that way they wouldn't be a problem. That didn't work out too particularly well. The Australians are much more sheep-like than Americans are. What people like you fail to appreciate, Jerry Coyne, you, you manage to blind yourself to history, is that in the United States, we are willing to, spend, uh, to spill blood to insist upon our liberties. So when you talk about gun-related deaths and how they wouldn't rise if you go around tightening, which what you mean by tightening is a complete uh, or an almost complete ban, that is going to lead to an increase in gun-related deaths because we will fight for our rights. You will not take our uh, rights away from us without a struggle. It will not happen. Australia can do what it wants. UK can do what it wants. I don't live there. Those people can lay down and worship anybody they want all day long. More, if that's what does it for you, more power to you. Just don't come crying to me when something bad happens. That is not this country. And you are a fool uh, for, for believing otherwise. Everybody else have a great day.